Hey everyone, welcome back to I Teach You Science. This is going to be Earth and Space Science cluster questions. We're doing the fall 2024 clusters. I'll probably break this into three total parts. If you can, please share this video with your friends, with your teacher. We want to get the word out to help as many people with these cluster questions as we can. Hope you find this useful. And here we go. We're starting with the Earth's climate today. It says it's the result of energy interacting with the substances and surfaces that make up the Earth's spheres. Okay. While Earth's spheres have different properties and characteristics, they're not isolated from each other. So they're interconnected in some way. Interactions between these spheres have caused feedbacks that have changed Earth's climate over decades. Feedback is just like a domino effect, essentially. If something happens, it affects something else. The model below shows information about the Arctic climate. Okay. So it's saying climate change is happening. So there's less ice. Let's just go in order. Climate change. Warming is amplified in the Arctic. Okay. Then there's reduction of ice then less sunlight reflected from the surface, which means the ocean's actually getting more of that heat. The heat is then released into the atmosphere in the fall, and then the Arctic atmosphere warms more, and that changes the wind patterns, which leads to more climate change, which then the loop continues. Okay, so use evidence from the climate model to describe how reduction of ice will cause a change in pressure above the Arctic Ocean and how this change in pressure results in change of climate. Okay, so what we need to know here is that the pressure is going to be associated with temperature. So more temperature gives lower pressure. Low pressure is also associated with more storms, more, more clouds, etc., rising air. How this change in pressure results in change of climate. Okay, so we could say as temperature increases air pressure will decrease lower pressure and cause rising air and more storms or precipitation maybe something like that is probably fine um, so that would have been hard if you didn't know the relationship between temperature and pressure. So in order to rate this, one being the easiest question in the world and 10 being the hardest, I would say if you knew this, this is very a three, but if you didn't know it, it could be a, impossible to answer it. So we'll just go with a five. All right, number two. The model below shows some information about positive and negative climate changes that occur in the Arctic. Four processes have been removed from the model and are listed below. Okay, so let's just see what this is saying. So this is saying negative going into atmospheric greenhouse gases. Positives amplify warming, reduce warming. So things that are making the warming go down are on the left, and things that are making the warming worse are going on the right. That's for greenhouse gases on the top loop. The bottom loop is just Arctic warming. So things that one thing that's going to amplify Arctic warming and one thing that's going to reduce Arctic warming. Okay, let's see. Process one. Earth, as it warms, radiates more infrared energy that passes through the atmosphere into space. Okay. Number two. Wetlands and thawing permafrost release carbon dioxide and methane to the atmosphere okay thawing permafrost and wetlands mm. releasing co2 okay so this just to my thought process this says plants and soil remove co2 from the air that could reduce warming wetlands and thawing permafrost release co2 and methane to the atmosphere that can make it worse so this is going to make everything worse so this is definitely going to be on this side for amplifying warming going back to process one earth as it warms radiates more heat into space that could actually if the the heat's going into space that could actually reduce warming so that could be over here Number three, oceans remove CO2 from the air. Okay, so that's just removing. So that's going to be three. 
and then decrease in snow cover, reduce reflection of sunlight. That's going to make it warmer. So that's going to be over here. So that this sounds like it's for the Arctic. So I'm going to put four here, which means two goes there. So for these last two, the oceans just removing CO2 from the air is just going to be something to do with the atmosphere greenhouse gases because the gases are being removed from the air right so this is probably three which means earth as it warms radiates more infrared energy that passes through the earth's atmosphere into space that's going to be one so that's just doing process of elimination i would say i absolutely hate this question and it's pretty much ridiculous so i'm going to say this is a 10 out of 10 in difficulty. I didn't think we would get a 10 out of 10. This is a terrible question, and it should be re-looked at by New York State. I hate it. It's so ambiguous. It's terrible. All right, we're moving on. I don't even want to think about that. All right. There we go again. Oh, more feedback loops. Great. Okay. The model below shows a climate feedback loop. Wonderful. So we got process. Well, we'll start with process one. Darker surface are revealed, okay? Maybe like the ocean water. Then there's a decrease in albedo, which is reflectivity, okay? Then there'd be more absorption, and then the temperature increases. And then the hydrosphere and cryosphere impacted. That's the water and ice. Cryosphere is the ice, okay. Which table correctly identifies associated future impacts associated for, um, to the ice and water from the Arctic Ocean coastline climate feedback loop? Okay, let's see. Cryosphere. Snow and ice in Arctic areas will melt and break apart, decreasing albedo. That's correct. Sea level will increase covering existing coastline. That's correct. Is it that easy, guys? Is it that easy? I don't know. Let's keep going. Temperature in the Arctic Ocean will increase, causing the water density to increase. That doesn't have anything to do with this. S hydrosphere is not ice. That's wrong. Let's just get rid of hydrosphere saying ice. So I don't even have to look at that one. And we're going on to number four. Snow and ice will melt, decreasing albedo. Salinity will increase. It has nothing to do with salt. It's one. That's pretty easy. I'd say this is a three out of ten. It still doesn't balance out that horrible question that we just had to deal with. Going on. Decline in minimum Arctic ice extent, 1980 to 2020. Line XY is a reference line. Okay. Um... I'm just trying to look at this. So the stripey area is 1980 Arctic, and then the, the this area is 2020, so we lost the stripes. That's what it's saying. Which claim identifies the current rate of Arctic ice change along line XY and its effect on the North Pole? Okay, so we're doing rate of change here. So what do we got? Miles per year? Miles per year? Kilometers per year? Or kilometers per year? So it seems like we have miles and kilometers here so you would have to measure x to y um you're going to do this with a piece of scrap paper so i will do this really quick so when you measure this this is going to be either 500 miles or 750 kilometers because they gave answer choices for each so i have to solve this twice and this is going to be divided by the amount of years, which they said was 40 years here in the choices. So the kilometers per year is going to be 18.75 kilometers per year, or the miles per year is going to be 12.5. All right, so let's see. So this is right. This is right. It's not this, and it's not that. Okay, so now we're done, A, B. In the next two years, the North Pole will be ice-free. No, because we're only going to lose... And if, if it goes 12 and a half miles per year, we're only going to lose 25 miles of ice, which is a tiny little bit here. It's not going to be ice-free. The next five years, we would only lose 12 and a half times five. So it's not going to be ice-free. It's not going to lose all the ice. So we're going to say two. In the next five years, the North Pole will still be covered in ice. Because it's that's the rate of change. So it's going to be two. All right, number five. Which piece of evidence best supports the claim that there is less sea ice formation in the eastern Arctic Ocean off the coast of northern Europe? So it's starting to talk about 
ocean currents here, polar easterlies, east Greenland current, Norwegian, and polar front jet stream. It's definitely not the jet stream. So that's like a um, an air current in the upper troposphere. So we need to do um, look at our reference table here and go to the ocean currents page, which is here. And we need to look at if there's less sea ice formation, that means something's going to be warming the area. So we want something to warm. So one of these currents is warming. The polar easterlies push sea ice to the eastern side. That would not make there be less sea ice. So that's just wrong. The east, so either the East Greenland current is going to warm or the Norwegian current is going to warm. So let's look. So East Greenland current is right here. Norwegian current is right here. Look at the key. The dotted line is warm and the solid line is cold. So Norwegian current is the answer to, here, to this. So that was pretty easy. I would say that's probably like a 4 out of 10, just to know you use the reference table on that. All right, well, that was the first cluster. I cannot believe we hit a 10 out of 10 difficulty question. They, they really should look at that question. It's horrible. It's really, really bad. Unless I'm missing something, it just seems terrible. All right, well, um, there'll be more cluster questions ahead. If you want to, please share this video out. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next one.